So the question for this gentleman about hockey, what hasn't he done? Uh, acclaimed broadcaster, Stanley Cup winner, uh, kind of a businessman, developer, uh, coach, GM, uh, educated, part of the one of the most important sporting families in Canadian history. Overall, great guy, good mind for hockey, uh, made the 72 Summit Series better with his uh, broadcasting. Of course, we got to be talking about the very, very renaissance man uh, of uh, Toronto, Brian Conacher. Now, Brian Kennedy Conacher, born in Toronto, August 31st, 1941, uh, again, was a pro hockey player, played with the Team Canada David Bauer program, coach, executive, and, of course, broadcaster. Now, he played on the Canadian Olympic team, then became a pro player in the NHL, winning the Cup in 67 with Toronto. Now, after playing, Conacher took up coaching and broadcasting. Again, he was the color man with uh, Foster Hewitt for the 72 Summit Series. Did a really, really tremendous job. Now, he later joined the Racers and the Oilers of the WHA as their GM. And he was the first manager of Maple Leaf Gardens, uh, the new Maple Leaf Gardens, until 98. He also held the position of CEO of the Royal Agricultural Winter Fair for a short term. Now, Conacher, the son of Lionel Conacher, was voted uh, Canada's uh, uh, top athlete for that first half of our nation's century. He was eventually educated at Toronto's Upper Canada College. And, uh, of course, his brother Lionel was a pro-Canadian uh, football player. And the great uh, Charlie Conacher and Roy Conacher are Brian's uncles. And he's also Curry, the cousin of athletes Murray Henderson and Pete uh, Conacher. Now, uh, Brian Conacher's uh, uh, junior play became very prominent with the Toronto Marlies of the OHA. In 1960, he had 34 points in 60 games, then moved on to the Rochester Americans of the AHL. Now, uh, 62, he got his break with Toronto, played his first game uh, that year, and then played with the Father Bar program in 64, where he made the Olympics. Now, back in the Toronto system in 66 uh, with Rochester, but played two games with the big squad. Now, when he's rookie year of 67, he had 27 points in 66 games, including 14 goals and five points in their championship playoff run. Now, 68 split time with uh, uh, with uh, Rochester and Toronto. In Toronto, he had 25 points in 64 games. Now, 1970, he was back with the Canadian national team. And uh, before the Summit Series, in 72, he played with Fort Worth of the CHL, uh, 26 points in 40 games, and Detroit of the NHL with four points, including three goals and 22 contests. Now, in the offseason, 72, he eventually found himself with the Ottawa Nationals of the WHA, 27 points in 69 games. Now, now when we say, say uh, about the, the Father Bar program, he played again on that squad that played at the 64 Winter Olympics at Innsbruck, and that was a really good team where a lot of skaters have gone on to great success. Now, uh, he also played in the 68 All-Star game, though not as an All-Star, but as a member of the Maple Leafs, because in those years, the current Stanley Cup champion played the uh, All-Star team from the other squads of the league. Brian was notable in that game as one of only two players to wear a helmet. After 68, of course, he was relegated once again to the minor leagues, and that final season with the Detroit system again wrapped him up. Now, he made the Ottawa Nationals for a season. Now, after retiring as a player, he had a few small coaching stints in the minor leagues before becoming the GM of the uh, Indianapolis Racers and then the same position in 78 with the Edmonton Oilers. Now, Conacher was also a part-time coach with the Upper Canada College. Some of his students he coached became college collegiate or, and or professional hockey players, including Silaps III, Jason Sapola, Andre Faust, Mike McKee, and uh, NHL first-round pick Daniel Kuchuk. Now, as a broadcaster, again, he was most notable as his fellow UCC graduate Foster U.S. color man during the 72 Summit uh, Series. Uh, and again, his style was very, very similar. Imagine Bob Cole as a color man, very cerebral guy. And he kind of predicted the difficulty that Team Canada would have had in the series because he never underrated the Russians because how could he? He played uh, against some of those players 
in the 1960s that played in summer 72. He also worked for ABC for a while as he was the uh, the color man with Kurt Gowdy at the hockey uh, coverage uh, for Team USA at the 76 Winter Olympics on uh, ABC. Now, uh, uh, GM of the Edmonton Oilers, he uh, was preceded by uh, Pep uh, Bep uh, Gaudelin and uh, succeeded by Larry Gordon. But when you think of Brian Conacher again, ladies and gentlemen, is all about being a Renaissance uh, guy. Uh, you know, uh, uh, media studies were uh, part of his forte as well. Very highly educated. But imagine this, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a Kennedy in the U.S., people think politics. If you're a Conacher in Canada, you're thinking sports. He kept the Conacher legacy going, but he took it to the new level because he was not only a great athlete, you can't win a cup unless you're a great athlete. He was on the intellectual and development side of the sport where maybe his other family members didn't have that chance. So he broke a new ground, and again, supported the WHA, the Father Bauer Program, the Summit Series Legacy, and again, he will probably be uh, w one of the most important uh, historians on Summit 72, because he saw it all, and especially uh, the line he stands out when Esposito tripped on the flower in Game 5 in Russia, and he said, this is an example of what we've gone through. He knew more than he was letting on, because we found out later on how the Russians were stealing our food, didn't want our wives to come over, using all kind of machinations, almost like a wrestling promoter, you know, a kayfabe uh, a wrestling promoter. Again, when I think Summit 72, I think a lot of things, and I think of Brian Conacher. So he has my respect, because I learned more about broadcasting as a color man by listening, listening to Brian Conacher than any other person besides Tony Kubek ever. So if I'm putting someone up there with Tony Kubek, and I've been a journalist for 37 years, I'm telling you something, I'm not the only one who thinks that way. So that's the legend of Brian Conacher. Thanks for listening. Bye.